find you what you need. Back by popular demand, we are restarting the weekend soul stories. I've been so happy to be listening to what you guys are talking about instead of you just listening to me. I love getting feedback from you. I love getting your emails, hearing from you guys on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. And I've got a big announcement about a Facebook improvement that's happening exclusively for this group so stay tuned for that very soon but today i'm going to be doing the weekend soul stories review this is going to be the soul stories from march 31st right through to april 7th and not only do i want to make sure that you guys get the absolute best data because the one big mistake people are making right now is they're not taking advantage. And I know because there's not nearly enough of you signed up for my daily soul stories updates. So I know you're not getting the absolute firsthand information on what's happening in your areas around Toronto, around GTA. This is really important that you guys are not relying on a second or third hand source and definitely not relying on just what you see in your mailboxes. Because if you're just waiting for a postcard to show up or someone on Twitter or Facebook to mention it, it's very likely, again, you're only getting one side of the story. In life, there are always two sides especially in real estate life. You do not want to rely on just one side of the story without getting all the details because you might be missing out on some of the soul stories that you're about to hear. There was some soul stories this week alone that never will have never made the news but are certainly newsworthy. Would a 2 million dollar real estate sale that ended up selling 700,000 over asking would that be newsworthy for you I would think so I should think so for that matter but very often these kind of stories will not make the news they won't make it on Twitter they won't make it anywhere but they will make it here and I want to make sure they make it to you So let me do the rundown of a few of the top areas this week in terms of sale activity, in terms of what's been going on. And this is sales that have ranged everywhere from under a million to over six million. So that's what's happened this week in the Toronto GTA area. Some of the areas listed in the top 10 are in the Bedford Park area, in the Forest Hill area, in the Young and Eglinton area, in the St. Andrew Winfields area, Banbury Don Mills, Bayview, Willowdale, and even Lawrence Park. And as I said in the beginning, one of those properties on that list ended up selling for 700000 over asking so that tells you that the low inventory situation that's going on right now across the city is affecting all price ranges not just the million dollar house but even the three five and possibly six million dollar properties out there so who I'm who I'm hope who I'm hoping is listening out there are those of you specifically who've been owners of your homes for at least 10 plus years. It's been shown in many studies and many studies I've personally done that in the 10 plus year ownership range is where a lot of the major fortunes are made. So for those of you who've owned properties for 10 or more years, and you're not sure of what's going to be happening in the future. Some of you are hoping to 
take some of that money that your house is worth and do something else with it. You need to be able to make that decision very soon. And I mean this month soon. With markets like this, with inventory the way it is, at any moment, there could be an avalanche of inventory that hits the market. And if that happens, that changes the whole game as far as being a seller goes. Of course, it's not easy for those of you who are buying. It's never really been easy for anybody buying, but the, the, the homeowners, the people who have the properties are the ones that are holding the cards right now. It remains a seller's market for now. And if it does shift, and if it does become a 90s market, from 1989 to 1992, you wouldn't even recognize how the market shifted. And everybody was convinced it wasn't gonna happen, including the real estate community. So I'm not gonna be the one to tell you that it's gonna keep going up and up. And if it does stop, you have to remember that history can repeat, meaning that the recession itself only lasted. And I, and I say this lightly because I was there in the 90s. I bought my first home in the late 90s. I, I remember all of this. But the recession itself only lasted about two years. It's the recovery that took five times that long. It took over 12 years for prices to go back to where they were in 89. And for a lot of people, depending on your age range, waiting 12 years just to get your money back might not be in your list of favorite things you want to do for this next decade. You might have other things in your life you want to do. And if your home value is attached to your future, meaning that the money that you might get out of it right now could possibly help you make some bigger life move movements and changes. You might want to think about cashing out now and making that decision going forward and having the option to be able to do that. Because for a lot of people, the delay on that decision will definitely reduce your options. So of course, to get all the latest information, to get everything you need from me. First thing to do is go, of course, to the link in this podcast to get the information on how to find out your daily soul stories and get your home value updates. Or you can always visit realestatepodcastshow.com or email me if you want to skip all of that stuff and go right direct to the source, paul.indrigo at century21.ca or c21.ca. Either one gets to me. So I don't want to limit you in any way. I don't care if you don't use social media. If you listen to podcasts, I appreciate that you do that, but that might be the extent of your social media exposure. And it's not really even social media podcasting. It, it, it was around before, by the way. Um, audio and radio, it was all around way before social media. So that's where a lot of us, myself included, I only listen to podcasts um, in audio form. I don't sit there and watch podcasts and look for the production value. None of that matters to me. I'm here to listen to the stories and of course, help you hear some of these stories that you don't get to hear. Thanks for tuning in.